And we're back here, round 11 here at the Memphis TCG Regional. I am your host, Jeffrey Saran Rap Saran. And I'm John Kettler, your other host in crime. And, and we have a great matchup here as the players are getting set up right now, but two well-known players across the globe, oh, and yeah. uh, that being Caleb Gedimer and Pablo Meza. So what kind of matchup we're going to see here, John? That's right. Well, we've got Caleb from the Midwest and Pablo Meza from Mexico here together playing. They are both regional champions this past season. They both have excellent records in the past, excellent accolades, and it's a pretty exciting matchup. It's something we've seen before, but in a different context, not really quite this yeah. way this weekend. It's Malamar versus Zorak Lycanroc. Yeah, we're going to see kind of a, a, a mirror deck to what we saw Daniel Altavia playing uh, yesterday on day one uh, with Caleb's deck having that Chimico or Corio, kind of that, like, you know, psychic box mashup really going on here through Malamar. And on Pablo's side, you know, a very structural uh, Zorak Lycanroc flicks. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it looks like we're, we're all ready to the action here with Pablo coming off to a strong start. If I'm in his position, I'm feeling great about having that many basics to start. The only question and is... And a lily. And a lily. So he's able to draw six cards for the first turn. Past that point, you can only draw up to six for a lily. But here, six draw cards amazing power right now. Yeah, being able to have that many Pokemon as well as the Lily is kind of kind of almost a cheat code at times, right? <laughs> you, you just feel a little unfair. <laughs> a legal man. cheat you, code. A legal cheat code. You can hit all the right buttons on the control pad, and now you got the Lily right here turn one. That's Nest right. ball coming down, uh, probably eyeing down another Zerua. Uh, but, yeah, very very uh, blazing fast start here on Pablo's side. Yep, and with the Zorak GX deck, it is all about draw power, all about trading cards for new cards getting all the little pieces to the puzzle you need. No longer puzzle of time, so not as easy as it was before. But the metaphorical puzzle, being able to get those Zorark GXs mm -hmm. into play, double colorless energy to supply the energy to be able to attack with Riotus beating. And with this pass, it isn't as explosive at the start, but the Nest Ball sets him up. And it's so crucial against Malamar to be able to get multiple Zerua out turn one. So we do see a pass over to Caleb's side. Mysterious Treasure coming down. Discarding the Psychic Energy, which you want those in the, in the discard pile to take effect, those Malamar Psychic Recharges. As he skims through his deck, taking an inventory to see what's prized, what's not, how many Malamars do I have right now, and opts to grab an Inke. Yeah, and that's right. With Caleb, he has to respond to as many, if not more, Inkes to the number of Zeruas we have from Pablo because the Zeruas are going to be clutch. And you guys can't see it, but we had a little dance going on on Jeff's <laughs> side when that Chimeco got into play. That chimichanga is ready to be eaten, ready to be <laughs> served hot with the ability lock. Bell of Silence is going to be, be, the, be the attack of choice here. Uh, going to be able to hopefully get a skateboard down to that active Inke. Attach the Psychic to Chimico and attack away. And really just, that's really going to put a halt on Pablo's side. Everything oh, that stage yeah. one on his side has an ability. That's right. I mean, just going down the list here, actually this is pretty crucial. We have basically all of Pablo's deck being abilities. We have Mars Shadow with its Let Loose ability. We have Tapu Lele's ability, the Evolution's abilities. So <laughs> really, with that Bill of Silence lock right now, Pablo has to resort to using his itty bitty little basics to do stuff. He can't trade, but he can hit for pretty big damage, assuming that he hits heads with this Rock Ruff. With one fighting and one other energy, you can flip a coin. If Tails, you do nothing. That's one option. So. He can hope to deal 50. Uh, on, on the other hand, he is could. He, okay, so he's played Nest Ball for the, for the Tapuleo there. Yeah, he Nest Balled. So that's a very important distinction there is that you can't play the Pokemon card with an ability from your hand. And we had the judge check in there just to go ahead and be sure. Good job by the judge to go ahead and double check. But, yes, it went straight from the deck to play. So that's a really clever option by Pablo to get around that. Although it's not quite the impact that he wants because it's only dealing 60 damage. And Caleb is slowing Pablo down, forcing him to nest ball for a tap lately. That's an ability he's not going to get to use. Mm -hmm. I, want, I can't wait to see that. Like, uh, we do see a, a very unique, uh, not unique, but a tech that's going to take to uh, uh, some effect here on Pablo's side. And that's going to be the Studio Wudo from Guardians Rising. That roadblock ability seems to put a big roadblock in the way of these Malamar decks as they have to fully take advantage of all five bench spots. Oh, yeah. And we've seen time and time again, even though Malamar has far and away been the most dominant deck up to this point in the tournament. Nevertheless, it's always been, almost always been in a situation where if the, it had one less bench spot, then it would be incredibly awkward 
to do anything, and ultimately the player would be in a losing position. Well, getting that roadblock, Pseudo Wudo, from Guardians Rising limits the bench size of your opponent to one less. Yep. And as a result, if you have to bench two or three Inke, and then that roadblock comes into play, it's like, well, whoops, I mean, what am I going to bench now if I don't have any draw power? Do I bench Tapu Lele? Do I bench... I bench my attacker and not draw cards. Uh, this Bell of Silence in a weird roundabout way could come back to haunt Caleb, but I mean, at this point, he's probably feeling like he could stay the course, yep. do another Bell of Silence, slow him down a bit, and then just force Pablo to address it. Absolutely here. So we did see a Cynthia, two Malamars now on deck, let loose coming down. The typical kind of uh, strategy here. You want to get the Bell of Silence going, get your Malamars out, and then, and then let loose. Because, uh, you know, one thing we noted from Daniel's interview yesterday, he likes the turn one let loose. He wants people oh, yeah. to use let loose on him because it just gives him better outs to his lilies, better outs to his different draw, draw uh, ball engines um, to just kind of get going on his side. And when you stack that ability on top of everything else that you're doing, you can be in a great spot. And with this change in aggression here, Caitlin oh. is going to score a couple quick knockouts, applying lots of pressure on Pablo to address it immediately. But the saving grace for Pablo is that if he has that roadblock pseudo wudo, then right now Caleb has two Pokemon on his bench that aren't going to be that potent of attackers, meaning that the evolution, the Guzma or, or Lycan Rock to yeah. bring up the Malamar to knock out can yes. be extra frustrating. This is, this is definitely going to be an inner spot right now because right now his only attacker is in the active spot right now. So if we can get that roadblock down, uh, Fred, nice little here. Going to be able to Lily draw as of right now three cards. I'm sure he's going to play out his hand a little bit if he's yeah, opting yeah. to Lily over to Cynthia. And if he can get some Zorax down to that roadblock, we're going to be in a great spot here uh, in turn two for Pablo. Third Rock Ruff coming third down. Rock Ruff. Double colorless. And it looks like we're going to get four cards. There was a fighting Pokemon there. I didn't see if it was the roadblock or not, but not much else outside that. So it's just going to be probably be a pass oh, with man. the Ram. Maybe he was hoping for some sort of out to Zoroark as opposed to... I'm, I'm kind of curious why he... Actually, one possibility why he might have gone for the for the uh, Lily over the Cynthia is because he only runs one copy of Cynthia, whereas he runs four copies of Lily. So something might have happened to that Cynthia at some point. Might be in the prizes. Could be prized. Uh, could want to opt to have that later on as, you know, later game. As you get your trades going, Lily is not as effective, so you want that Cynthia yeah. potentially later on. But uh, regardless of that, he was not able to get there. We do see a Ram on the Necrozma, and now Caleb, full force, Ultra Ball down, is guarding what looks like to be uh, another Ultra Ball and a second energy for a third Inke. What an incredible setup for Caleb right now. I mean, he was able to seamlessly bell of silence for a turn to slow Pablo down. Not missing a beat with his own setup, though, getting those Malamars into play getting a Necrozma GX oh, attacking for a knockout. So we do see a Guzma in hand. So we're going to definitely see a Guzma here in another setup through Bell of Silence right now uh, as Pablo was unable to get any Lycanrox or Zorax down here. So he's going to take that option away, bring up the Lele and Bell of Silence one more time as another he reestablishes his setup. Two prizes. That is really frustrating for Pablo, I bet, because remember, with these GX Pokemon, they're getting knocked out for two prizes, not just one. But instead, Caleb opts for the Bell of Silence again, saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to ah. go ahead and make you work for this. And it looks like Pablo actually top-decked the Zoroark. So right on cue there, <laughs> Caleb, seeing that he was not able to get there. Bell of Silence. Oh, Bell of Silence, the Tapu Lele GX to reuse at some point, but not this turn. So because remember, we can't play those abilities. Oh, and it he looks has like a roadblock. So we, so he, so he has the roadblock here option. But he can't play the roadblock because of Bell of Silence. So it looks like he might just go ahead and go for the knockout here. That might have been a little bit of anticipatory play by Caleb, thinking, okay, maybe Pablo has the roadblock. So I want to go ahead and force him to address this Chimeco. I can free up this bench spot. Yeah. And that way, once roadblock goes down, I have everything that I need. Yeah, so we're going to see here kind of in similar fashion uh, that we saw in the last game that he's going to use Mars Shadow as his pivot. Uh, bring it active, test second energy, which then hard retreat, refuel second recharge, and is able to set up a strategy that way. Cynthia coming down, chop your hand to your deck, draw six cards. A little bit of a, a refresher on Professor Oak's new theory back in the Heart Gold Soul Silver yeah. days. Oh, this Jeff guy over here trying to rehash the old days and make me nostalgic. But <laughs> at any rate... We've got pretty good odds for Caleb to have an 
out to be able to retreat the Marsh Shadow. And with the uh, Seaspawn going down, we don't have immediate action on that so side that of the board. But. Nest Ball, grab the Oxus here. We're going to bring the solid 90 attacker down there, be able to use Psychic and Power Blast, respectively. Uh, looks like a second energy in hand to kind of perform that strategy we were mentioning before, being able to attach to the active. And we've got three Malamars. And this is good math here because, remember, guys, Zerua resists Psychic by 20. So if you forgot about the resistance, then it would not be enough. But with that third energy, we've got a clean power blast for a clean knockout. I want to uh, say that um, Caleb's side of field, board state, is very symmetrical, very organized, yeah. very well kept. So I applaud you for helping us out here in the booth, not uh, <laughs> scatterbrating your cards all across the field. Oh, for sure. And on top of that, I have to applaud just a really good line of play because this is the least disruptive roadblock we could possibly see from Pablo here where we already have a perfect setup by Caleb and once that roadblock goes down all he's gonna have to discard is what the Mara Shadow yeah like, that's not really that hard <laughs> okay what's the Mara Shadow I got it I got two other skateboards that's uh, easy buckets 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 <laughs> Malamar coming down. Looks like he opted to do what looked like to be a choice ban in a Lycanroc GX. So we might be seeing, um, let's see, once, oh, Devour Field in hand. Choice ban will be a uh, clean knockout on across GX on bench. That was rammed earlier. Yeah. He's setting up a pretty good play there. And worth noting that Pablo Meza, one of the, well, the only uh, second Zorark Lycanroc we've seen on stream all weekend, to my knowledge, has four copies of Rock Ruff and three copies of Lycan Rock GX wow. giving him really good odds of hitting exactly what he needs as far as being able to bring up something from the bench. Only two copies of Guzma as a supporter card, so he's taking basically completely different approach for it and seems to be paying off as far as a knockout goes. Uh, although, let's see, that was 100. That was 160 right exactly. 160 with a devoured field. Yep. So good clean uh, knockout. Malamar able to grab that uh, Lycanroc GX, get the choice pin for him to get that fresh knockout on the pre-rammed Necroz GX on bench, bringing him to three prizes. We're in a tie game right now, but Caleb still has a lot of set up through three psychic recharges. Oh, yeah, for sure. And at this point, even though technically it's tied three prizes to three prizes, Caleb is effectively a possession ahead in the sense that he's going to be able to get a knockout this turn one way or another. He's going to be able to retreat easily. He could address this Zorark GX one way. He could also consider approaching one of the Pokemon on Pablo's bench, bring one of those All Pokemon right. up. And it looks like we have a just concession right there. Yeah, Marshadow GX coming down. Yeah. Pablo already losing one to weakness policies earlier. Uh, don't and I think getting that knockout right now really sets him too far behind. Yeah. He had a lot of one price options on his bench. Uh, really easy KOs for pretty much any attacker Caleb's side. So. Uh, 37 minutes left. He says, you know, let's go to game two. I'll go first, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, do a little better this time. Yeah, and this time around from Pablo's side of the board, we're going to want to go ahead and keep up the strong play from earlier. That was a very convincing opening for the first turn. The Chime Echo was just really frustrating, even though it never flat out locked Pablo out of the game. It did just enough at just the right points where it was out there on the very first turn basically giving Pablo a dead hand in a dead turn. And then later on, two turns down the line, when Caleb is foreseeing the roadblock being a potential issue, maybe clogging up his bench space, he's like, no, let's go ahead and bring up the Bell of Silence. Let's go ahead and frustrate him even more. And that worked out great for him. Bell's, Bell of Silence working dividends for this Malamar deck, just establishing what you know seems to be a prowess right now, uh, being, a, being heavily favored in a lot of these different matchups, and a lot of them being played here in day two. But... We're starting back off into game two. Pablo, right off the bat, Nest Ball has a rock rough Zoru a start. And Nest Ball, and what, you know, what are we grabbing here? Well, probably going for a Zorua, getting multiple Zoros into play. And this time, I, I doubt we'll see much different lines of play from Pablo because this Chimeco tech has been pretty common. It's not that surprising. But getting those Zoros into play and having some way to address it as soon as he can, maybe one alternate path that Pablo could take is getting what we're seeing just now, a Tapu Lele into play before the Bell of Silence mm -hmm. lock kicks in so he can set up not necessarily an immediate response to this Bell of Silence, but a little bit of pressure as far as a knockout goes. So Caleb is still going to need to play his typical setup. He's still going to need to get those Inkes into play 
to get his Malamars into play, which are his energy acceleration. And Pablo's like, you know what? I can still win the same way. I can still find ways to bring up those Inkes to knock out. Now, that said, the odds are lower because he relies so much more on abilities. Pablo's list gets hurt more by Bell of Silence mm -hmm. than your average Zorark Lycanroc list because he only runs two Guzma. So we do see the weakness policy coming down on one of Zorars, another one having a choice ban. Three, three Zeruas, one Tepalele, one Rock with the Active, and then a Let Loose on Pablo's side. But as we said before, Caleb's decks prepare for these turn one Let Loose. Yeah. They're, ready, they're ready to handle that there. They want you to get them there because if you hit the Lele, people get a turn one tap, uh, turn one uh, Lily. They're able to really get the ball rolling on their side. That's right. These Malamar lists run tons of outs, tons of ways to be able to get out of weak opening hands with four Ultra Ball, four Mysterious Treasure item cards that let you search your deck for Pokemon, which in turn let you search for cards that draw you more cards. And then you're basically in like draw inception right here. You're drawing on top of drawing on top of drawing. And so Psychic coming down and Bell of Silence there. We do see on that Acrobat goes between Deoxys and a Tapu Lele. So I think he's going to opt here. We see a Necrozma GX come down and just a Cynthia, Cynthia. That, he, that he soft drew. That's right. And that makes a big difference when you're trying to get your early game setup going on where we did talk earlier about Roadblock limiting the bench of Caleb Gedimer. And by playing things like Tapu Lele GX to search your deck for draw supporters like that Cynthia that got him a fresh new hand of six. It's a big deal. Oh, and he has no Inke on the no first turn. No Inke's on the board. Just a Bell of Silence while it's still not oh, the worst Oh, and this thing. Kukui is a big deal. This is a knockout on the Bell of Silence oh. right there. That yep. is Kukui, Hard Retreat, the Rock Road, DCE to Tapu Lele. And yeah, right there on cube, Kukui uh, paying dividends off that let lose to get the KO on the Bell of Silence. So that's gone and out of the game. Yep. And, and another great thing about Pablo's list is that he runs three copies of Professor Kukui, so the odds of being able to hit the perfect math is not a problem at all. And we see a turn two concession from Caleb right here. We are on to game three. That game uh, lasted less than four minutes here. We're going to see a brisk shuffle here. We're going to have a solid 30-plus minutes to finish this series out right now. Pablo getting the better end of the let lose this time and was able to proceed. Kukui, D CE Lele KO on the Chimico. I love it. Ba 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 ba. I'm loving it, man. This is really <laughs> exciting here. But with Caleb in his line of play, it was pretty excellent for the first game. I'd like to just go ahead and see that general approach repeated just with some Inkes. Yeah, you know, unfortunately for here, if Caleb can get going and get that Chimico active, it really does put a halt to Pablo. But we do see there, there is an out in the form of DCE Kukui on a Lele. So there are options there in place for Pablo to not get set too far behind. But if that Bell Silence really gets going, uh, you know, it's going to really set Pablo far behind in this matchup. Yeah, and really, when you break it down, the luck that Caleb had that second game was incredibly awful because just as I was saying right before he just basically drew Bell of Silence and more or less passed, he had so many outs to be able to get Inkes into play, so many outs to be able to get something off that Cynthia, but at that point it was just nothing. It's crazy how that can happen, but you know, Pokemon's a math-based game and there is almost nothing that's guaranteed, which yep. keeps it exciting, keeps it fresh. But if you're on the receiving end of bad luck, it can just be pretty rough. But that's why we have best two out of three. Absolutely. It's kind of like hitting that critical hit in the VGC game. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you get the freeze. But you can't play those odds all the time. Just like the TCG, you can't play them either. That is right. And we play the odds by trying to run draw cards, items that let us search for Pokemon, things that give us the best odds, even if it's never 100%. So we are here, turn one, Caleb does go first, right off the bat, Mysterious Treasure, uh, dumping away the second energy to the bin, and quick inventory search, but we're going to see probably an EK here on Marshadow. Yeah, and I feel like we're going to see our Bill Hop again. He's going to go ahead and get that Chime Echo at some point, but <laughs> because he's going first, he doesn't have the same pressure to get it into play immediately, because he is going to want to attack with it at some point, unless... He just gets such a blazing fast start that he's more benefited by just scoring a knockout on something. Yeah, so he does have the, he looks like, I can't see what he discarded there. It might have been a Malamar, a Malamar. yeah. A Malamar coming to the bin, and, and he already has an Inke in hand. Um, so, going to grab another one here. Going to have four Inkes on the board. And uh, if he hasn't supported me, <laughs> if it's a Lily, it's going to be a real <laughs> powerful star, I'll tell you that. It's yep, it a is a four Lily. Inke. That's a, and the, it's a fresh the lily for eight. So fresh, so clean. Woo! We'll clap here. That was an awkward one. Let's try that again. Yeah. Lily for eight. 
You can't see us, but trust us. It looked awkward. It was it was uh, it was abysmal yeah. at best. But you felt it though. That's the important. It part. touched the heart. It did yeah. touch the heart. Okay, so actually, with four Inke in play, almost like I'm almost a little worried that that might be overextension on Caleb's part because ideally, you really only ever need three. Now, depending on how strong his follow up is, that might be a moot point. But when Roadblock Pseudo Wudo goes down, yes. That can make all the difference where he will have tons of Inke and presumably tons of Malamar as well to accelerate his attacks. But that will put him into a position where either he does cute little bells of silence plays, get that little bellhop there with the bags and just start going nuts, or get an aggressive big attacker. And he really can't choose one or the other too easily. Or uh, on the alternative, he could do something kind of awkward like attack with a Malamar, but he's probably going to go with one of those other plays. So pass over to Pablo's side. Uh, Rock Ruff down. Lele for a, uh, sorry, Tapa Lily down for a Lily. Uh, Zura come to the bench there. And I'm trying to see what else is in hand, but it looks like he has two Lilies in hand. So I'm curious yeah. to why he went for the Lele there. Is it just to kind of be prepped for that Chimico when it comes down? Well, it could be. I mean, I think one thing he could be doing by getting that extra Lily is, well, a little bit of Chimeco prep but also some follow-up with that where it looks like he only had, I think, oh, I mean, I see the Lele in his hand, so he has another Lele. Maybe another thing he was aiming for is to save that Lele later on, maybe anticipating that he might get a Bell of Silence against him at some point. Yeah, and absolutely. At the, and at the same time, just having a hard out without having to bench anything, that might be a possibility. Yeah, I think definitely playing that down before that Bell of Silence comes through and having that attacker already on bench, because it looks like he does have Kukui in hand as well. But pass over to Caleb's turn, playing one of his rescue stretchers to get that Malamar back that he discarded earlier. So we're going to get one to the, to the board right now. Um, and there's one also, an additional one in his hand. So um, two Malamars coming down, getting them set up, set up there. And he also sees a Psychic Deoxys also, so uh, curious what we're going to see here. Energy coming down with a Deoxys to the bench. Additional Skateboard to the Inke, and it, might be, it looks like we're going to see another Lily to get up to six cards. Won't be so fresh, so clean like the first one there, but it's still no. going to be a pretty powerful supporter. No, it, it's just what he needs. It's just what he needs to keep on going right now. Keep on trucking along. Get that Malamar to play, and as long as he gets an attack off and a knockout, that, that's pretty advantageous for him, although... Again, we can go back to the Chimeco play. We've got the <laughs> Friend Ball play. Friend Ball searching your deck for a Pokemon of the same type as one of your opponent's Pokemon. One of those great throwback cards from the old days returned in a brand new format. And even more important than ever before because Psychic is the most played type in every deck. Searching for that Chimeco, though, that bell hops out there. He's got those bags. He is ready to get that silence going on. And he is <laughs> expecting a tip. There you go. Bell Silence coming down. Second energy on the recharge there, attacking the Rock Ruff. And there's the Kikui. Do we have the DCE play like the turn prior? Yes, we do. Oh, Hard Retreat, Rock Ruff, response. DCE. I love it. Right there, right on cue. Similar to game two. We don't want that Chimeco here. Go, go take those bells elsewhere. Yeah, although the saving grace for Caleb right here is that, yeah, sure, so the Chimeco got knocked out. So what? I mean, I've got a GX attacker coming your way, and I've got a good prize exchange coming your way, too. Was it didn't? Uh, so uh, on to uh, Caleb's turn there. After the uh, Kukui knockout, energy drive on Pablo's side. Promotes the Inke with the ex oh. escape board here. But there's so only one psychic energy in the discard pile right now for Caleb. He, Caleb he's going to have to be a little more clever here in the way that he discards his energies, and maybe even a little lucky, because I don't see that much energy in his hand right now, but I do see the Oracorio from Guardians Rising with its Vital Dance ability, searching for Psychic Energy. He opts to shuffle it back in, though, right now, because that card can be a liability if you have to bench it unnecessarily. There's a viability also, and he may have not had any outs to discard the energy he got right. as well, but uh, Scythia here, shuffling hand in your hand, Oh, draws and six. an Ultra Ball with two Ultra Psychic Ultra Ball, double energy. Psychic Energy. That's a, that's a cheat code if I saw one right now. Uh, That's gonna right. Gonna go to Ultra Ball those two away. Uh, not sure he's gonna grab off it. Maybe just something to kind of hold his hand for later in the game. Yeah, I don't know if I got to see a whole lot of follow up there as far as. Oh, never mind. There's a Cynthia. But with that Ultra Ball being able to discard two Psychic Energy, he can get a GX attacker. He can choose to score a knockout this turn if he wants to. He's got three Psychic Energy in the discard pile right now. Psychic restart, Recharge letting you attach a discard a discarded Psychic Energy to one of your bench Pokemon. That's three. Ooh. 
That's big damage. I just saw Pablo's hand there. We see double Zorak and a Mars Shadow Seer, so it could be a big turn of events possibly uh, after this knockout from the Necrozma GX. But Necrozma GX coming down. Going to see triple Psychic Recharge to set up that Prismatic Burst. Does 10 damage and discard all Psychic Energy attached to your Pokemon for each Psychic discarded. Get an extra 60 damage. Yeah. And going into not just Pablo's next turn, but Caleb's next turn beyond that with that Cynthia in his hand, he's going to get two prizes for this knockout and in addition to that even if Pablo is able to respond with a GX knockout to a GX his GX is probably going to get knocked out by another GX assuming that Pablo is able to, or Caleb's able to get his response either Marsh shot or GX or another big attack to score a one shot knockout he was able to top deck a Lycanroc GX right now, so he does have the Zorak GX come down. He does have another Zorak GX in hand. He has not evolved it, looks it like yet. Looks like trying to figure something out right now. Oh, uh, he was trying to figure out uh, distinguish the hand and discard pile. That's kind of what yeah. uh, that was there. But he has a Lycanroc GX in hand as well as a Tapu Lele. Um, okay, so the Tapu Lele was not the Zorak GX. Full art cards right there. Kind of yeah. can throw off can throw off the screen a little bit. <laughs> I wonder if he's going to try to dig and grab a Kakui here and see if he can get a Devour Field playoff. It looks like he's, he's got also flirting the with Malamar. the Mallow. Mallow, search your deck for two cards to put at the top. Shuffle the rest of your deck before putting them at the top. And it's so good with Zorark decks because the Zorark decks are constantly drawing new cards. So you don't have to wait to benefit off of the Mallow. You just discard and draw what you instantly search. So by doing this, Pablo has the ability not only to set up a knockout for this turn, but to set up his later turns as well. Absolutely here. So, uh, shuffle deck right there. I didn't see what he grabbed off the Malibu. Oh, gonna and he's going for deck. a Lily. Okay. Looks like... Uh, or is that oh, a, a trade? trade? It was a trade. It was a trade. Okay, a trade. Yeah, operations, a trade for the Lily yeah. there. So, the yeah. second sword coming down. DCE. Um, are we going to see the Bloodthirsty Eyes come down? Probably uh, likely not. So. But he does have the Marsh Shadow to let it. loose. He's thinking about it. He may be thinking here, do we want to get that Malamar, take out one, and then let loose him and hope he doesn't get an additional third out? Um, he's already used one Rescue Stretcher. Right. Although that's the great thing about Caleb's list is he runs two rescue stretchers. So he gives himself relatively good odds of being able to return fire with Malamars. I kind of want to make a little point here. I'm not sure about uh, – uh, there's two options here in the Malamars, both with the skateboards, and one has the energy attached to it. But to bring that energy uh, to the act uh, energy once it's active, it's going to bring that energy to the discard pile, allowing a little, little more extra recharge for his Malamars there. So – Maybe there's some additional thought there, but I'm curious as to why he brought up that one versus the one without the energy. Yeah, well, I mean, on one hand, he probably already figures that Caleb has all the energy that he would need mm -hmm. at this point in the game, so might as well go with something with the most resources in case of an unforeseen circumstance where an attacking Malamar or a retreating Malamar could be a big deal, and that's okay. probably the most likely thing yep. is retreating Malamar because even with the escape board, this isn't Floatstone, folks. It ain't free anymore. You still got to pay one energy to retreat. So two energy to retreat, minus one for the escape board. That's still one. And so you can get in an awkward position where he has to pay to retreat with a Malamar. So pull up the eyes of bringing that Malamar. KO with Zork GX through Riotus beating. And on the Kalos turn, promotes Deoxys with a lone psychic energy. Uh, going through the most heroes, trying to see what, what, what exactly is going through Kalos' mind right now. We do see an acrobat about to come down, but two Malamar, NK. All have escape boards, Tony Hawk style. And we do see an acrobat coming down to the, to the board. Guzma and Oracorio. Well, looks like it's going to be a pretty difficult decision for him. But ultimately, saving the Guzma is the, probably the correct play, which he's going for right now. Because Oracorio is effectively a search card. And at this point, the only real benefit in keeping the Oracorio is if you get into an awkward position in the very late game, we need to search out more energy. Mm -hmm. but Caleb's just like, oh, no, I'm okay. I've already got a pretty strong setup. I just need to follow through with knockouts. All right. We do uh, see a second energy coming down to the, the Necrozma oh, GX here. The... So there is a play here with attachment. Triple Psychic Recharge. It's going to put four energies on that Necrozma GX 60 times four. 240 damage, plus the 10, 250, resistance to 230. We've Just taken out enough. a Zorak GX. Just enough and then some. Yep. But Pablo can still stay the course here because, keep in mind, guys, you still have to be able to get the energy and the outs to be able to 
get a knockout next turn with Caleb's deck. So, yeah, he's definitely going to get the knockout here. That's Deoxys has a one retreat cost, so it's about on par with the Malamars for retreating now with the escape, their skateboards. But at the same time, if he still stays the course with knocking out Malamars, then Caleb might actually come up a little short, assuming he doesn't have an out to Guzma. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit of an inner spot for Pablo to, uh, to uh, you know, uh, come back at because he's going to need to find a, a weakness policy, I think, because Caleb is still not presenting the t one of the two Marshadow GXs in his deck. So even if he does get the return KO on his Necrozma, that's going to go to the discard pile, and that's just going to make the Marshadow GX a little bit go a little go hunting a little bit and be able to use that prismatic burst with the weakness to take it out and not just without the we with the weakness but even even just without the, the resistance with, as well yep. so the odds are going to be better and effectively it's just going to be a better necrozma gx at that point right absolutely there so uh caleb's there still going through his turn finalizing the last little piece there acrobite ditching the lele after the cynthia and another ultra ball going to be coming down Probably just starting to, you know, set up his following turn here. Maybe grabbing a Marsh Shadow. Maybe grabbing, oh, it looks like an additional Inke. Oh, and this is a pretty nice play here where as long as he has the out to get the Malamar to replace. So if he has that Rescue Stretcher, and that's effectively what it is right now, is he's used one Rescue Stretcher. One's been knocked out. So he has to have a Rescue Stretcher to do so, meaning that if he has it, then he's threatening the knockout next turn. If he doesn't, then we could get in an awkward position where there's an Inke not doing anything. All right, so we see piece one. We do see a Kukui in Devour Field. Now we're just missing the double colorless energy. He has a rocker for the additional bench, which he just and opts to discard. Does he get the double? It doesn't look like he gets the double off the trade. So, oh, man. I mean, he has just about everything, but folks, Generally speaking, in Pokemon cards, you have to attach energy. And if you don't have energy to energize your Pokemon, you are just way without any luck. Oh, man. Name of the choice, man. We're still just missing the one piece. He's dealing big damage in an alternate universe where he has a double colorless energy. So uh, fighting energy coming down to the Rock Roof. Going to be intimidating that uh, dangerous rogue play as these Malamar decks do fill up their bench. However, uh, Caleb just won. GX knockout away from sealing his 11, uh, round 11 match against Pablo Meza here. He's got Guzma here. in hand. Question is, though, I mean, he's thinking about what he needs to do, so he isn't instantly playing that Guzma down for game because it looks like he might be just a little bit off. He has three Psychic Recharge in play right now. He has Guzma. He's a single card away from winning Whether it's Malamar, game. whether it's Psychic Energy, yeah. he's just one piece away from being able to Guzma up to Tapu Lele and Prismatic and so this, Burst. This goes all the way back to that decision you were talking about, Jeff, about whether or not to knock out that Malamar with a Psychic Energy on it. And Pablo here, even though he's behind, that little play is giving him a tiny window of hope right now. Okay, so we see what looks to be a Psychic Recharge maybe coming down, but still that little window of hope. Caleb is off by a card because he made that good play. So... I like this line of option here as an alternative, where instead of actually going for the instant gratification of a win this turn, yes. he's just applying pressure with the Deoxys, getting a little bit closer and saying, hey, you know what, if I can't get the win this turn, let's go ahead and set it up for next turn. Triple second recharge, Deoxys, Power Blast, Knockout, Guzma, Rockra for the KO. Um, we're going back at Pablo's turn, presents Zorak GX up to the active spot, still double colorless, less <laughs> uh, first trade, just uh, discarding a Lily there. Looks like it was a judge, and there's the weakness policy. Uh, yeah. So this could be an interesting turn right here, but still uh, not quite there just no. yet. We need that double colorless. While, yes, he can get the KO on the Deoxys, it's a one prize attacker. We're only going down to three prizes while Caleb's already down to trade. one. Got a second trade. We still do not have the double colorless energy on Pablo's side. It is just crazy, and, you know, that's – one of the things that makes Zorark a little bit harder to play right now in the current standard format is just a few months ago, Zorark GX decks had tons of ways to get back energy. They had puzzles of time to be able to search for anything from their discard pile to put back into their hand. They had energy recharge, special charge, to be able to put double colorless energy back into the deck. But now every double colorless energy drop 
is so crucial because you may never see it again. Absolutely there. And I think that's kind of like, you know, not to, to do a derail too much here, but that's going to take into effect on how Whitey Sylveon decks are doing so well, be able to take advantage that there is no recovery in these Zorak decks currently. Yeah. But Guzma on the Necrozma GX, and oh, there it is. Yep. Caleb has the Guzma to show that he has the, the game knockout. Right there. And well, there we go. Caleb Gedeber taking game three here, round 11 winning, going down up to 8 2 and 1. Looking strong right now. Looking strong. Yeah, for sure, man. That was just pretty insane. I mean, like, with the back and forth between the three games, the effective draw pass in the second game, it was pretty back and forth, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it was a very, it was a very great game. Uh, I think the biggest thing to note there was Caleb was really quick to scoop that game, too, allowing him enough time to complete this game three here. While it didn't take up all the time, it was enough time for him to solidify his game three. Yeah, that's right. And the thing is, you never know what's going to happen in, in that game three where you could have a situation that's even more awkward than what we saw with Pablo's no, no double colorless energy that whole time to follow through. There could have been a situation where Caleb had fewer things to work with but enough to apply pressure. So that game had the potential to drag on. He's lucky that it didn't, but it's good that he conceded that second game. I agree with that. Absolutely there. And, you know, uh, you know to the effect of that you know, deck there, you know, uh, sorry, to uh, Pablo's play there was that he was not able to get a lot of Zork GXs out immediately. Uh, he had to let loose and, you know, get going that game, but he was not able to hit any Zorks, any Lycanroc, really. Uh, it just took too long to get going here. But uh, we are going to take a little brief second here to have an interview with the winner, Caleb Gedimer, and we'll be right back with you here shortly. And we are back here with your round 11 winner, moving to 8-2-1, Mr. Caleb Gellimer. Uh, so, you know, let's talk about the deck a little bit first before we go into your matchup here. What was kind of your reasoning to uh, decide on Malamar here? Yeah, it's uh, certainly an interesting choice, seeing as though this is the deck that I beat in the finals. Uh, Rukan over in Philly a couple weeks ago. Um, Rukan and I have been trying to find a way, along with some of our other teammates, Danny Altavilla, Isaiah Williams, uh, Jimmy Taylor, Poet Larson, a bunch of people. We found that Chimeco is probably the best way to give yourself a really, really f solid matchup. It's probably still around 55, 45, 60, 40, somewhere in the realm of that against these Zorwark decks, specifically Zorwark, uh, Lycan Rock, and as I just showcased there, the Chimeco really gives you that extra time to build a really strong board of multiple Malamar to the point where you can trade prizes with that Necrozma. The four energy discard on the Necrozma is super big, gives you a way to one hit KO that Lycanroc, one hit KO Zoroark with a weakness policy, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, the Chimeco really just carries you to that point where you can make uh, a game of it. So with, with the Chimeco, how did that thought kind of come to to fruition here? You know, uh, you know, no one's really seen the card before prior to this regional, so it's always awesome to see those intuitive decks into these Malamar decks or even decks in general. So how did that Chimeco idea come come alive? Uh, quite frankly, I would hedge my bets that Rukan was on PTC Geo scrolling through cards. <laughs> kind of like, hit hit oh, the hit the go. psychic type bug and button yeah. and started scrolling through to see what exactly. he found there. So I am not entirely sure, but I think that was it. So how many of your team uh, is piling this deck? We saw Daniel with it yesterday. We saw Rukan with it yesterday. And uh, yep. it seems like the, all three of you guys are in day two. Is there anyone else with the deck also? Uh, Isaiah played it. He, uh, I don't know. He, he said he was playing kind of poorly, so maybe that was why. But he finished in the 128, so he got some points. Uh, Good. He played that yesterday. And then our friend uh, Ryan Bruckner on the team as well. He had a bad go at it today. Uh, <laughs> He renamed it uh, something can. I'll leave that to the All imagination. Right. All right. <laughs> All right, so we're going to the matchup here. You see, uh, you know, Pablo had a really explosive start. Rock rub, Zoras to the bin. Uh, what are you thinking at this point in that game one? Like, what, what is your, I guess, uh, uh, an initial strategy to go after these Zorak decks? Yeah, so it, it really just comes down to getting that turn to Chimeco. Uh, if you're playing first, you have two options. One, you can put it onto the bench, and that kind of tells them the direction you're going to be taking this game. It's kind of playing your card. So in the second game there, I had such a strong hand that I was really close to doing it. I was super tempted because, you know, you're running the risk that you don't find it off of that first supporter mm -hmm. card if you don't put it down. But see, right there, I wanted to prioritize Ink K because it can go two directions. One, you can get that Chimeco and just kind of give yourself the time to get Malamores, or you can have a gas can start like I had in that game with yep. the four in case turn one. Absolutely. And then it doesn't matter as much. The Chimeco kind of seals the deal as we saw there. But uh, 
I, I think I might have been in the running regardless uh, yep. in that game without it. So in the game two, though, we did see that it was a little bit of a, a anemic start <laughs> yeah. for you there. Unfortunately, there was your Tapu Lele prize what we're going to go with there because we saw times no, where you might have gotten uh, it. But I, I had it in my hand, actually. But okay. I, I, I was not winning. I think, yeah, so uh, so what was your reasoning there, I guess, just because, like, you know, not enough, you wanted more time to solidify your game three, or what's kind of going through your yeah, mind? Yeah, I mean, that, I think we were fine on time either way, but it was just like, all right, let's save my energy for another game. My hand was horrible, and uh, when you get into a situation where they have the opportunity to KO an Inke, handpick the knockout yep. on their turn, which he would have certainly had since I didn't get any down on my first turn, I would have been in a real bad spot, so... Uh, just just not worth my time. So going into game three now, you know, you scooped, you scooped it up here. You want to kind of get a fresh start. You're going first. And you had a kind of a gas can right, start yeah. for Inke's right off the bat there. Uh, so let's, let's walk through that game a little bit there. So what was your strategy going into that one? Yeah, uh, just, again, I, I, I wanted to get that Chimeco going, uh, going first. You have the opportunity to uh, almost guaranteed attack with it on your second turn, provided things go well. Things did. Um, and then from there, you know, once you got three, four Malamars, you can go in with that Necrozma GX, take your first KO. Uh, there's other options like getting your Dawn Wings into the discard. We didn't really see too much Marshadow action in yep. that series, but uh, the, the Marshadow is, is a really great attacker because it can double for two reasons. Like, you can get the Dawn Wings Necrozma into the discard and use its GX attack effectively, but then at the same time save your energy so that you can have a follow-up prismatic burst which that would have been like the the royal flush but yeah. we didn't get there so it, everything went well pablo had a uh a stumbling turn where he missed a double carless he probably had about a 50 50 shot of getting it i, I noticed he had two gone so maybe a bit of a, a yeah. lucky beat there but uh, okay. that bought me even more times so. absolutely now well Eight, two, and one now. Got three more rounds to go. Congratulations on the win. Uh, we're gonna take another brief second here. We're gonna grab Pablo Meza, also speak with him, and uh, we'll be wrapping with, with you here shortly. And we are back yet again. Quick part two to the round 11 interview. We had a little bit of time here uh, after that game here. So we're going to talk to both players about their experience and what they brought, uh, brought so far. So unfortunately in there, uh, down to 7-3-1 right now. But let's, let's go through kind of the different you know games going on there. Uh, game one. Lightning start had all the Pokemon out there uh, and uh, got everything set up there. And going into Caleb's turn, he was able to get that Chimico and attack with the Bell of Silence. Have you seen that so far through the day? Were you expecting that? Uh, I I heard about it yesterday. I didn't face any, and then the previous round I played against a Malmar Shrine deck that had the the Chimico. So I was also sitting next to Rukan. I know he's uh, Caleb's teammate, so I assumed he had it um, as well. Now. Like, in the, in the oh, I want to set up. My hand was really good, as you said, off of that Lily. Yeah. Um, what I should have done was I had an Ultra Ball. I should have Ultra Ball for Lily, grabbed the Kukui right there. And so I could do the play of, okay, you're going to attack me with Chimiko, then I'm going to hit you, and then uh, uh, do the Kukui and KO you. But I didn't do that. So by the time, like, when he played the Chimiko, I was, like, face palming in, <laughs> in my head. Yep. And... Uh, so I ended up nest balling for the Lele and hitting the Chimico, but like the Chimico buys him that one turn to stabilize, which yep. is the one turn you need to destabilize Malamar. So it's like you can't target down the in case, you can take down um, anything on their bench. And then because I didn't KO that Chimico that second game, I mean that first game, then it came back to hunt me later on and it attacked again. So yeah, that, yeah. that, was, a, that was a small um, oversight on my part. I thought about it before the game even started, I was like aware of the Chimico. I just didn't execute it, and that cost me game it, one. It, it does happen that way, unfortunately, in the game one. But game two, however, uh, similar fashion, really set up your board there, and then you hit the Marshadow let loose. Yeah. And that was probably the biggest turning point on Caleb's side because he had nothing. <laughs> you were able to uh, take out the knockout on the lone Inke, and it was just... Uh, I believe it was just a Necrozma GX, and uh, no, it might have been. He started Chimico game two. In a Chimico, so I had, yeah. I had to yeah. KO the Chimico. Yeah, Chimico. You only had Necrozma, and then. And that's when we started cool. seeing that strategy between the Kukui, DC, and the Lele there. Yeah. And I believe you yeah, nest ball for the Lele that turn. Yeah, and yeah. it kind of. Uh, I was kind of like, nest ball for Lele? You don't typically see that. <laughs> uh, you want to use the yeah, ability even, there. Even the judge was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And then on the game three, uh, you know, both have both blazing fast starts. You were able to get the instant KO on the Chimico. However,. 
uh, were unable to get Zoroark, so unable to yeah, get Lycan Rocks in. He gets every just, turn KO. Yeah, it's it, like it's that turn. You don't get to destabilize. You don't get to target. You have to go at Chimico rather than an Inke or something like that. And you can't trade. You can't advance your game state. And you lose the energy attachment on Rockruff. That was also pretty rough. Like, if I had started, like, if I find a Lele in my opening hand and it's okay, I probably yep. just start the Lele. Um, simply because. Um, that instant pressure, right? Yeah, the instant pressure and to prevent the Chimigo play. And, like, I already had a Lily in my hand in that game three, but I even went for another Lily just to guarantee that I knew I would, like, sequence turn one Lily, turn two Kukui, and then I wanted that extra Lily for the third turn. But. Um, yeah, then he got the the real good start. It's like you're trading a Chimico for a Lele. That's all yeah, yeah, exactly for, there. For so uh, uh, seven three one right now. Uh, looking at the field, how do you feel about your your next three rounds uh, going forward? I mean, I'm always happy facing Malamar, even if they have the Chimico. Um, I know there's a lot of Ray out there, and um, or from what I've heard, and I'm pretty happy with that matchup because I have triple Devard Field, triple Kukui, and triple Choice Man to deal with them. Super loaded and dangerous rogue. So, I mean, I'm confident the deck, the deck is, like, as long as I get a solid turn one, I'm pretty sure the deck can beat anything. Absolutely there. That's well, uh, good luck to you going forward here for these last Thank three you. rounds here. We're going to uh, take it uh, back to another quick break while we get established and ready for round 12. And we'll be back with you later on today.